think it's a joke? You think it's a joke? No, oh, that's okay, that's from our okay. Let me catch these motherfuckers, yeah, I'm gonna shoot them, you understand me? This is our fucking land, yeah, stay on your own fucking side. On the floor! 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 <laughs> If he gives us a problem, I'll shoot him. So sad, man. It's just so sad. You think that um, people can do this to wildlife? In South Africa, four rhinos die each day at the hands of poachers. For the South African green cops trying to protect them, each loss is extremely emotional. Like mourning a loved one. the particular rhino that died, but actually seen it born on the farm. For me personally, probably the biggest lesson that I'll ever learn in anti-poaching. And I just hope that um, the sacrifice of that one life will save thousands in the future. South Africa's biodiversity is one of the richest on the planet. Treasured as the country's main attraction, its reserves and natural parks are among the most visited in the world. <laughs> On the other hand, this wildlife also catches the eye of poachers. Among the many endangered species, the most vulnerable is the rhinoceros and its horn, a highly desired item. At its current poaching rate, in 10 years, this mammal, which has been on our planet for 40 million years, will be nothing but a distant memory. To fight against this impending extinction, Carl Thornton and Drew Abrahamson founded Pit Track in 2007, a group of 40 armed men. Ex-military, former bodyguards, but also mechanics or musicians, they have all become conservation soldiers. Across South Africa, Apart from the famous Kruger Park, the government is not responsible for nature conservation. Pitrack is one of the 600 private militias that guard the hundreds of nature reserves and private parks from the intrusion of poachers. For Carl, 38, and Drew, 40, Green Cops has been their calling. Carl owns a personal security company, and Drew runs a luxury tourism company. Except for the help of a few patrons, they finance their work almost entirely by themselves. This, uh, you know, we're waiting for us, this kid to stay. You know, I've got to use one. Mm. One, two, three, Frederick's got his own one. The, the sacrifices in, in anti-poaching, our operations are countrywide, um, you know, all over the place. 
our time away from home and away from our family is extensive and uh, there's a lot of sacrifice you know it's a very low income game so financially we sacrifice a lot of luxuries and a lot of things that we could have and then for the children you know children always um, left uh, for the same extended periods of time it's uh, very emotional to uh, try and keep that all together so uh, it's very demanding um, to do what we do but it's it's the passion making old man noises my word <laughs> <laughs> Despite being out on the field for long periods at a time, it doesn't bother Carl and Drew. That's devotion. Gauteng, one of the main provinces of South Africa. It is here, two hours from Johannesburg, that Pitrack has signed one of its biggest contracts, the surveillance of the Plumer Tourist Reserve. Spread over more than 50 kilometers squared, half the size of the city of Paris, this reserve has 7,000 animals, including a considerable number of rhinos. At the heart of this reserve lies the Pit Tracks command base. At dusk, Carl and Drew called up some members of their team, since unusual movements were detected in the park. They need to react as quickly as possible. Okay, so we'll mix it up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna proceed down this road. We're going to establish um, listening posts, so we will uh, move, move, move. Each All mission is roads, meticulously the roads, prepared. Uh, the Facing them are perhaps the rhinoceros poachers, often heavily the armed and financed by the Asian Mafia. Syndicate poaching, obviously the worst of it all. Uh, syndicate poaching, usually internationally driven. Um, these guys uh, recruit uh, the best in the game, ex-military personnel. And um, these poaching syndicates work at, uh, at a very high level with corruption. And uh, they target individual species. And it's really the syndicate poachers that can really drive a certain species to extinction. You know, when something like, for instance, our rhino horn becomes such in demand and becomes so valuable. An adult rhinoceros horn weighs five kilos. Today, one kilo is sold for 60,000 euros, twice as expensive as gold and cocaine. At this price, organized crime and its network of poachers are ready to defend themselves. Going out and fighting them could be as deadly as going to war. attempt to neutralize their enemies, Carl sends three men into the private reserve in the middle of the night. It is 4.30 in the morning. After 20 minutes on the road, the driver stops. The three men will go on by foot in the dark until sunrise. The green cops know this land like the palm of their hands. Jennings and his men blend into the background to better hide from their opponents. The element of surprise is key here, even vital. Several pit track members have been injured in recent years. Once, one of them even got shot 17 times during an ambush. But today, the danger is less apparent. The poachers that the green cop spotted did not come to hunt rhinoceros. These guys at the bottom, they drop, they drop them at the bottom of this this field before we get to the river. They drop them there by that road. And then they come in and they cut the wood and set the snares and, and have a bush kitchen, set up a bush kitchen the whole day. They are wood poachers and bush meat hunters, not the expected big game poachers. Things can get messy though. Alpha, 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 Hotel, over. 
Copy on my hotel, Alfa Romeo on their way here, over. A few kilometers away, Jakub Pinar, 20 years old and the youngest in the group, joins Jennings and his team. The butchers of the day, a family of villagers from the area. Leave! 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 Come, get out, put the handbrake. Everybody sit, come, sit on the back. Look at this, look at this. The Bushmen looted a few kilos of wood and planned to sell it on the roadside or at a gas station. Many of these small farmers live below the poverty line. Bushwood is often an essential supplement to their income. That's not enough to convince the young Pinar. Listen, listen. This is not the first time. Hey, keep, keep quiet. It's not the first time. Salvesta, where is he? There, we've arrested him before. It's the second time I've caught him now. He's telling, no, we never come back, we never come back. See this vehicle? It's loaded wood before. It's not the now first time. Give me the key, then I'm going to skill up. And then tomorrow you'll come back. No, no, no. no. I'll never come listen, back. Listen, I'll listen, never, listen, never listen. Come back. I'll never no, come no, back. No, 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 no. Please, no. I'll never, never come back again. As far as uh, preservation of animals go, it doesn't rely to species in, in specific. It relies to everything, you know. So as we deal with the bushmeat poaching and with the wood poaching and with the lion bone trade and everything else, all of these things are linked. So this is it's it's, it's a biosphere and it's a very fine balance on how everything works. You lose a bee and the bee stops pollinating the flower and the flower doesn't produce fruits and the fruit doesn't produce new trees and everything starts to death so everything works to a balance and if we can't protect everything within that balance we're gonna lose everything anyway put down your cell phone put down your put it dead in your pocket come sit take off your cap you think it's a joke you think it's a joke you think it's funny no sir now you take your stuff and you get out of here. If I see any one of you again, including you, it's your second time. Second time, am I right? Yes. If I see you guys again. Hmm. This time, there's just a warning without a fine. The rangers let their suspect go. But just five minutes later, Pinar and his men come across the perpetrators again. another vehicle inside? No, no. It's the only vehicle? No, it was yeah, only, only us. Police station. The cutwood, it is a rare species. This time, the offense is more serious. With no authority in this area, the green cops must call the police. Why every time we arrest someone, it's either it's for a funeral, it's someone's birthday, it's, it's a party somewhere. Why every time there's a big... There's a big story about it's it. The first time we come. First thing, yeah. you trespassing. passing. Yeah, Second thing, it's MITP. It's a mil mil malicious damage to property. Okay. No, 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 no. I don't take bribes. I do my job and I do what's required to do. So you're going to be waiting there until the police comes and then we're going to follow them all the way to the police station. So you... You're going to make them follow you all the way to the police station? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very must much. drive in front of us. If he gives us a problem, I'll shoot him. Today I'm, I'm ready for... Once at the station, the police discover under the heap of wood the body of a gazelle killed for its meat. In the end, these poachers will be fined 85 euros. Quite expensive for the locals. In theory, they should be summoned to court, but corrupt bureaucracy and the lack of necessary resources result in a flawed justice system. Meanwhile, on the other side of the province, Carl and Drew have been called in for an operation of a different scale. They travel 450 kilometers in their pickup truck, which also serves as a mobile office. This time, it's not about poachers, but something that has happened at a lion farm. Very key. 
Hello, are you still on your way? Yes, we're still on the way about 15 minutes. I'm sure we'll find it, yeah, but yeah, I'll, so I'll phone you. Oh, great. All, All right. right. Mm -hmm. Around 200 lions were raised and then killed for their hides and especially their bones. It was a local journalist who originally made this disturbing discovery. So what is, this, what is the content of this story, man? The content of the story is he's the manager of, of this... Of Predator Of Predator Pride. Oh. He's working for this Yuan yes. Pew that's selling the lines. Okay. This is a barbaric business, and it's all just to make a drink. It's a mixture of crushed bones and rice wine that, according to some beliefs, can heal anything and everything. Can you send these to me? Yes, it's a one that Please. you are. Holy shit. No oh, that's okay. That's from Renee. Okay, perfect. Cool. Look there. Yeah. So that's what's happening at this place. They are uh, processing all the lions that, that come there. They... Um, they sedate them, then they shoot them in through the ear, um, and then they boil the entire lion to obviously their skin at first, then they boil to uh, get the flesh off of off of the bone, and they sell the entire um, the entire skeleton to it gets exported to the east. Yuan Piu and his wife's name is Amanda Piu. P I O. P -I -O, just P -I -O. The Chinese speak of tiger wine, but as there are almost no tigers left in Asia, in recent years, traffickers have resorted to lions in Africa. As absurd as it is, this activity is legal in South Africa. Firearms are useless in this case. Carl and Drew will therefore have to look for a legal loophole such as cages that are too small or insufficient veterinary checkups. You know, there's a whole lot of um, contravening of the law that is taking place here. and. It's a very strong possibility that if we gather everything correctly and everything properly and build a proper case, so. we are build a, a good solid case around the whole thing that we will be able to shut this place down. Getting detected is out of the question. Used to covering up their tracks, Carl gets resourceful. Now incognito, the two can resume their investigation. Lion farms are normally enclosed with electric fences. After about 20 minutes in the savannah, Carl and Drew come across a suspicious building. This is like it's got outbuildings, a lot of outbuildings. It looks very ad like um, processing. It doesn't look lodgy, not at all. But it's got a palisade, a green palisade fence around it, no electric. It was a dead end, but not for long. There's a strong possibility they emptied this camp because it's right next to the road. Yeah. What is it? Is that inside this camp or is it in the adjacent camp? What, the branch? Yeah. Uh, this one. Is it in this camp? Yeah, it's like a dead tree. Is, is it a dead tree? It's a dead tree. Oh, yeah. okay. This is about a. Um, Oh, fuck. Look right ahead of you. There's two white lines lying on the side of the road. So, so, so this is breeding, man, because it's two males and two females. They're all male. But that one with his back turned to us is a male. Okay, so... They will be shot and processed and shipped off to China. This is the processing farm and breeding farm. There's more lines in that enclosure over there. 
Um, so this is where they are processing the, they obviously destroying, shooting the lions from three years of age and processing, boiling their bodies and shipping them off. So this is the place that we've been speaking about. I see these um, lions in the wild, man, and see them in their natural habitat and just see how everything works to a balance. And then um, you get some money hungry, greedy human being that's got to go and trap them into the enclosures and force feed them um, just to process them for bones, you know, no value to life, no value to the king of Africa. I mean, these animals should be respected. It's an iconic species of our, of our country and, and to see it like this is it's actually um, it's heartbreaking, completely heartbreaking. So sad, man. It's just so sad to think that um, people can do this to wildlife, you know, to take such a beautiful creature and farm it for its skeleton. Three months after our filming, Carl and Drew finally got the police to investigate the farmers. The green cops have promised to put an end to this farming. But before they can succeed, dozens of lions will still die in order to satisfy man's greed. Limpopo province in the country's far north. Another reserve, another contract for the Green Cops. When they are not protecting the local wildlife, the pit track men train their dogs out on the field. So, you know, when protecting animals, nothing better to protect an animal than another animal. You know, animals have all those attributes that people don't have, the ability to be able to see at night, hear at night, follow scent. So where we become blind and maybe our hearing's not so good, um, the dog, he can be our eyes and our ears for us in the bush. Anti-poaching units um, that don't use canines, have got uh, really no ability to apprehend suspects and um, no ability to be able to follow suspects quick enough in order to actually make an apprehension. Okay, when we stand off, it's one at a time. Halt. Contact for <laughs> Yeah, so the important thing is, is that the dogs, they need to um, um, accept the game. Get on the floor! Get on the floor! On the floor! On the floor! So dogs are naturally wolves, and wolves naturally want to hunt game. And training the prey drive out of the dog allows, and training the poacher drive into the dog allows us to follow people and not animals. Five men, put the arm on. Okay, all clear! I would say a dog is irreplaceable by man or machine in anti-poaching, and in my opinion, the best tool anti-poaching has. If they had to give me a choice, between my firearm or my dog, I would take my dog. Hey boy. Yeah. As soon as the training finishes, Carl receives a call. Some suspects have crossed the reserve enclosure. Yeah. These pit bulls can sense the tension. They serve as a deterrent. It's over. Yeah, bon. Yeah, no need to spring. 
As hulle spring, ek skiet. Klaar, ek maak prek, as my pop kan plek hier. Okay. So why, why would they shortcut from here to there? Yeah. To Check out big puppies. He jumped here, we saw him fucking jump in here, man. Let me catch these motherfuckers here, I'm gonna shoot them, you understand me? Yeah, you fucking tell everyone. This is our fucking land here, stay on your own fucking side. Yeah, you tell. Let's bring the trap this one. It's not your man, it's the man's one trap. But the man's here is so funny, you understand? I don't know who it is, man. I don't know who it is. So you can see the fucking ski. It's the man's one trap. 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 But they know that the people don't worry. It's not that they don't pay the trap. Everything in this game needs to be proactive. We can't sustain population figures by being reactive. We need to be proactive. David, 35, is very experienced in animal conservation. An excellent tracker, he is often the first to find the clues that can be traced back to the poachers. Hey, something wrong here. Why? You remember when I said this fucking thing? I don't know why it's fucking. Here it goes. Check there. Up the mountain. Filters near our message of what? We are in the corner of a cabbage patch. So we found the spore of, of a turkey. It seems to look like as if a, it's an all star time. It's plus or minus 30 to 45 minutes. Let's go, guys. You see, even on, on the road. So, He tried to hide this, his spawner. He's doing under tracking. So we must find it. Where did he move? He's still going to he's doing 360. Because now we he lost the we lost the spawn. So we are busy checking for what is going on around you. And around everything is here. Okay, he found the spawn now. Let's go into him. Tracking them down is above all a matter of time they must act quickly. Each passing minute reduces the chances of finding the suspect. After 15 minutes on foot, the poacher's tracks lead the green cops to the neighboring village. In this area, attached to the reserve, the green cops are entitled to search homes without warrants. by the villagers, or having already fled, the suspect will never be found. The operation is like finding a needle in a haystack, but thanks to their responsiveness, at least Carl's men have prevented the intruder from killing an animal. A small consolation, after doing a final no round cuts, of the village, no the men eventually no find an impala carcass, Child. Child. poached two yeah. days ago Skin by the looks of it. Cut. Given the magnitude of the task and despite all their efforts, these conservation soldiers are not enough to protect the incredible wildlife in these sanctuaries. Oh, 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 oh. 
Jack Kroonj, 42 years old, is a former bodyguard. He joined Carl and his team 12 years ago. It's a job that has given meaning to his life, even if it's not without its risks. Besides the poachers that want you, you've got all the animals that you're in their territory. They boss, you're just a guest. You've got snakes, you've got leopards, you've got lions, you've got spiders, scorpions, even <laughs> antelope are dangerous, you know. I mean, a bushbuck kudu's wrong place, wrong time, they're going to kill you, you know. So I think it's definitely one of the most dangerous jobs in South Africa at the moment, um, or even in the world. Uh, but somebody has to do it. Eh? I think that's one of the most important things because that's what South Africa's got, is only animals. Uh, look, we've got minerals and stuff, but animals is what the rest of the world doesn't have, which we do. Let's see, here's a skull. Top part of the jaw, bottom part. They took the horn off when she died. They removed the horns. That's the bottom jaw. Look at the skin after two years. Still, smell still going in. This rider was poached the 19th of December 2016. We were called in that morning after this rhino was poached. Um, the, the male and female were shot. The male died at the bottom there. They got his horn, but the female ran up this side. We, we protected her right through the night, but her shoulder was shattered. We couldn't do that, put her out the next morning. Mm -hmm. That's a failure. That's the way I see it. As man, as owners or whatever, we couldn't protect this. You know, so I feel all this is due to man. Man has created this problem and man is making this problem bigger. You know, we're not doing what we should do to protect these animals. We leave it where it is comes from the earth it goes back to the earth so look there there's no no grass growing yet this was exactly as this grass growing around over there and exactly where this carcass was laying the ground is dead nothing grown and this is two years later so it's a sign to say look something bad happened yeah Three years ago, Carl and his men experienced something unforgettable. They participated in a large-scale anti-poaching operation, during which several rhinos were hunted. At least one of them died. The police were sent in. The case was taken very seriously. Okay, you guys find a big bull. Okay. Okay, there's two things. Also, it's positive or negative. Yeah. Positive is hiding somewhere. Yeah. All right, and negative they're in the shade. Okay, sure. that's a positive. No, no way he's lying with his leg in the air. Okay. The mom and baby is the back side, other side of Graham's house. Okay, copy. In that, in that uh, surroundings there. All right. Copy. We followed them twice. There's no marks on them. Okay. Okay, it's only this, this two. The first victim was a five-year-old male. Like a crime scene, many experts were at the scene to detect the maximum number of clues. After shooting him with a very large caliber, the poachers cut off his horn with a chainsaw. It will be made into a powder and used in, as an aphrodisiac for rich Asian customers. A few hundred meters away, a second rhinoceros was shot down. A 14-year-old female. Yeah, okay, so this um, rhino, uh, the one that had been shot in the shoulder has been suffering the whole night. Uh, the whole shoulder inside is all shattered into little fragments. Um, they're busy now trying to dig out um, what's left of the shoulder and see if they can find a projectile to uh, positively identify the calibre used. Um, it's a mess, it's a big mess. The 
the savannah is in mourning. With deep sadness, the green cops also discover that the female was about to give birth. It's a sordid affair. One more in the long blacklist of poaching in South Africa. But this time the leaders of this massacre were unmasked, which is a rare occurrence. I want to see where these guys came in and where they came out. Um, we got our investigators on board, um, we locked down the whole property and then we started with an intense uh, polygraph and voice stress analysis investigation of which um, 12 members out of 24 that were on the ground um, failed their polygraphs for direct involvement. So the matter is still under investigation and we are still uh, pursuing um, with um, to getting to the bottom of exactly what happened. I say in my unit now, uh, in God we trust and the rest we test. So what solution is there to poaching when corruption is also rife among those who are supposed to fight against these mafia networks? In the north of the country, founded in 2001, is a very unique sanctuary an orphanage for baby rhinos whose parents were killed by poachers. At this secret location, nearly 300 young rhinos are cared for on 22,000 hectares of land under high surveillance. It is here where Carl, Drew and their men work most of the time. Once a year, the rhinoceroses get their horns cut. But even when trimmed, they continue to attract poachers. I know we want to, but on the camera, we don't want to be too close to the rhinos because it's just showing it's like pets, you know, so and that's not what we want. Hey, Oz. Uh, this is day shift uh, protection on the rhinos. Uh, they're free roaming, they walk where they want to, eat where they want to, the guys will stay on them 24 hours a day. During the day it's a bit easier because you can see them, uh, you can follow their spoor and 90% of the poaching gets done in the early hours of the morning. The, the risk escalates at least three times, four times. Uh, but this is a crucial part because they can come in and watch what's going on during the day, so still have to have eyes on and see what's going on. But it's basically just the protection during the day. Got the guys just keeping them in roughly in the same area. I was on counting them every hour, make sure that they've got their 20 rhinos that they're looking after. And that's basically how it gets done. This morning, Petronella Newwood, former police officer and founder of this orphanage, takes care of a young resident who arrived just two days ago. This is a baby that arrived with us on Sunday. And um, early morning, they heard some shots in the Kruger National Park, and they rushed out to the scene, the anti-poaching team, and they found a dead rhino, and her horns were cut out and hacked off. And then they found this little rhino baby. He's about a month old. And they also tried to kill the baby. I think he wanted to be with his mom and he was bothering them while they were, were basically uh, trying to hack her horns off. We, we just at the moment getting everything ready to clean his wounds where they cut him with a machete and hack him with a machete. Do remember when they're this age and they're this small, we're also sitting with the risk of um, that shock and dehydration and a lot of blood loss. A veterinarian is called in for backup. The young animal has been injured in several places by a machete. For two hours, under anesthesia, the young rhinoceros will be treated. So you put this on on, on Sunday, huh? Well, it worked well on his uh, nostril um, yesterday. Oxygenation 88. 
We think the calf was trying to protect his mom and he was trying to, to get them away from the mom more than anything else, yeah. And why they didn't shoot it, well, I think the reason was because I didn't want it to use another bullet. Otherwise the rangers hear the bullet. And uh, sorry, they hear the gunshot. 